Man, I read somewhere, heard somewhere, three million dollars a day. Yeah. My first week, I probably made twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> you know what she was doing? I'm Lorenz, um, AKA the real OG Islow. I'm a former dope dealer out of Los Angeles, California, Skid Row. What up y'all, Freeway Ricky Ross, South Central Los Angeles finest. I sold drugs before. <laughs> the real Rick Ross. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up with you, fam? What you doing here? Hey, man, I get to talk to the street legend. You been to jail? Yeah, man, I done paid my dues to society, prison. How much time you do? Ah, oh, man, not as much as you. I did a few years. I got about five, six years. I came up hustling uh, downtown Skid Row, so. How big did you get? I was 19 years old. I bought me a kilo. You had a kilo? For $40. That's how much money was down there. I just wonder how you felt when you made you your first million dollars. That's it. I ain't, I ain't... You made a million? No, that's what I'm asking you. How's it feel? I didn't even know I had a million. Oh, so when you <laughs> when you realized it then? Well, I felt good. You felt know, good. With, with me, whatever level I accomplished, mm -hmm. I always wanted to go a level higher. And you had to do the same thing to, to a certain level in order to get to a kilo. I, I did two things. One, I didn't know I was rare. I thought that the whole point of selling was to get to a kilo so you could stop selling rocks and doing that what I like to call hand-to-hand -hand combat. You wanted to do ounces then? Yeah. Two, I was just so hungry. Like, I was homeless. You know what I'm saying? I was down there. My mom was down there. So it was just like, I was so hungry. So you're saying that, that you were selling drugs to get out of poverty? Yes. Basically. Absolutely. So to get out of poverty, you was willing to do almost anything? I was willing to sell drugs. Well, that's almost anything. You know when you sell drugs that you, you put everything on the line? You know that there's guys that would cut your head off for a kilo of cocaine? Yeah, I'm pretty did, sure that you would. never thought about that. I was young, I didn't care. I just wanted some money, some You carried a pistol? A uh we yeah, yeah. And you wasn't worried about walking down the street with cocaine with the police everywhere? I mean, just like you had a partner, I had a partner too. When did you stop running up to cars and become freeway? It took me about three months. Three months. That's but fast, see the difference man. with me and, and most hustlers is that I saved everything. Mm-hmm. When, Everything. When I started selling drugs, I used to go, we used to, most of the time we would go eat at this little taco stand called Taco Pete. So we only spent like $2 every day oh, to man. eat on. So all the rest of the money was yeah, just was stack, 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 stack. Did you at least have cheese on your burrito, dog? Cheese, like. I had cheese. <laughs> yeah. I just wanna... Yeah, give me the cheese. <laughs> in San Diego going to do this deal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what happened is I had vowed that I wasn't going to sell drugs no more. And I had told myself I wasn't going to sell no drugs. Did you tell God? No, uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> so this is at the time when you had quit, you had told yourself, I'm not selling none, and this dude is calling you. Constantly, for six months. Where does he have these 100 kilos? Is they in the van? Oh, in the back of a Suburban. In the back of a Suburban. Okay. But he was DEA. Somebody's gonna write a rap song and think they're you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was just middleman in the deal. I'm not thinking right. that it's conspiracy. I'm thinking that how can I get busted by just introducing two guys? Right. But once I got to court and I started reading the law, that that's called aiding and abetting. And if you aid and abet a drug deal, Rick, uh, you can go to prison. You went to court and you started reading the law every day. Yeah, after you taught yourself. I started though. reading. Just like I sold drugs. I used the same principles. Same principles. Was it harder than selling drugs? No. It's probably mm -hmm. nothing harder than selling drugs. Okay. Because when you sell drugs, when you sell drugs, you're putting it all on the line. But nobody looks at it like that. They should. What about you? When was the first time you went through jail? Um, 
Well, I didn't. I didn't just uh, jump into selling cocaine. I actually started off selling weed. They were basically raiding the spot, and as I was walking by, I had just like went and and like basically re up. He looked at me. He was like, "Hey, I know you." I looked back. Like, no, you don't. And I kept trying to like walk, you know, to get away from him. And they grabbed me, and I had the uh, the weed on me. And then you didn't run. I didn't run. I had no. I always ran. I was working on one of my apartments one day. I had been out the game for about a year and a half. Right. Not selling drugs, not doing nothing illegal. No bulletproof vest, no pistol. So one of my guys said, man, the narcs just rolled by. So about 10 minutes later, I heard this loud screech. And I heard the car doors slam open. Bop, 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 bop. So I walk to the gate and I look out and they running toward me with their guns drawn. So I had on the rubber boots. I kicked the boots off and take off running. <laughs> so I run to the back of the apartment building. I jumped the fence, and there's cops already there, kneeled down. They had the whole place around, and they just start busting. Bang, 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 bang. I come out with my hands up. They handcuff me. You see, see that scar right there? Oh, yeah, you still got that scar? Yeah, I still got that. That ain't never going to run. I think it's one right here, and this right here. Oh, yeah, I they, see that one special face. They did those to me with uh, flashlights, and then uh, one of them broke his, his steel flashlight. He broke it over my head. Okay, so I'm going to just tell you a real story. Like, my mom's been addicted to cocaine since 84. Well, how could you sell cocaine when your mom was addicted to it? That's why I don't sell it no more. But at the end of the day, if my mom could, at one point in her life, choose cocaine over her own son, then well, it's probably a lot of money you be making. Well, you know, the way I looked at it is I don't have any regrets, only lessons. I knew people were addicted. They hadn't, it had no effect on what I was doing and what they was doing. Because it was always their personal choice to do what they did. Absolutely. Every person must Deal with carry their things. own burden. Yeah. And uh, I never gave anybody cocaine the first time they ever took it. I never had a pistol to anybody's head and asked them to take it. I feel that. Somebody gonna get the money. Might as well be you. What are we doing now? Like, what, what are you up to now? Well, what I'm most excited about right now is the legal marijuana industry. Uh, I'm gonna take all my prior experiences and lessons that I learned, and that's what I'm going into right now. What about yourself? Because of social equity in LA, basically, uh, that's an opportunity to kind of, almost like reparations due to the drug war, so. Uh, hopefully, I can get this uh, marijuana dispensary and uh, use some of my life lessons and turn and try to uh, empower myself, my community. Cool, cool, cool. It was good talking to you. Oh man, you know what? The pleasure was all mine, man. I, I feel like I learned some stuff about you. I I could not have learned through a documentary. When I you get rich, you. don't forget me. You're gonna be richer. <laughs> <laughs>